Okay, the inverse of an exponential function is a logarithmic function with the same base. It's, this is coming directly from our experience with solving these exponential equations. They have to have the same base and vice versa. So if you're talking about the inverse of a log <laughs> function, the inverse of a log function is an exponential function with the same base. So I have some basic examples right here. If our function is y equals 2 to the x, the inverse of that is log base 2 of x. That's the inverse function. y equals e to the x, its inverse is the natural log of x, the ln of x. If our function is just the log of x. Remember, if it's the common log with no base, that base is understood to be 10, so that's 10 to the x. Log base 8 of x is 8 to the x. Now, when you are looking at inverse functions, uh, one of the things that you were taught is a property of inverse functions is that they are reflections over the line y equals x. So I just want to show you uh, that here in the calculator. So if I'm just going to use the first one, 2 to the x, I put that in y1. Its inverse is log base 2 of x. I have to use change of base in order to graph this. So it's the log of x, close the parentheses, divided by the log of the base, base 2. And I'm going to put the line y equals x in here as well. Uh, and then I'm going to, before I press graph, I'm going to do zoom square because if you don't square up your window, it won't, the reflection won't quite show up right. So there's our exponential function. There's our logarithmic function. There's the line y equals x. So if you either turn your calculator or turn your head so that the line y equals x is going straight up and down, you can see that the exponential graph and the logarithmic graph are mirror images of each other across that line, okay? That is a property of inverse functions. Not only do the x and y values switch places, um, they are reflections across the line y equals x, and to find the inverse, you switch x and y and solve for y, okay? So properties of inverse functions there. So let's find some inverses of the exponential functions. So, you know, the basic one, 2 to the x, its inverse is log base 2 of x. Well, what if I've got some stuff in the exponent? What if I've got some stuff outside of the exponential expression? What is the inverse in that case? Okay, It's still going to be a logarithm. Okay, It's still going to be a logarithm. There's just going to be other numbers in other places. So again, same principles apply. Anytime you are finding any inverse of any function, you switch x and y. So x equals 3 to the y minus 4 plus 1. So we switch x and y. What's different in finding inverses is how do you solve for y? That's what's going to, what's going to be different in the different situations. But anytime any inverse switch x and y is always your first step. Then you gotta solve for y. So we're gonna start by subtracting the one. This is kind of similar to the square root problem. All right, we've got our exponential expression by itself. So if we're solving, if our variable is y that we're solving for, the only way to get y out of the exponent is to write it in log form. So in log form, this would be log base 3. Remember, the base of the exponential is always the same as the base of the logarithm of x minus 1. Since there was more than one term, I'm definitely going to put it in parentheses. Okay, I'm definitely going to put the x minus 1 in parentheses. Uh, before, when it was just a number, you didn't have to put it in parentheses, but when there's a variable and there's more than one term, you have to put it in parentheses. You've got to indicate, well, where does that logarithm cut off? Does it cut off after the x? Does it cut off after the minus 1? Where does it stop? And that's equal to y plus 4. y is still not by itself yet, so then we add the 4 to both sides. 
Again, you never change what's inside that logarithm, so that plus four just gets tacked on to the int. So that is the inverse function of three to the x minus four plus one. And okay. so, not really that difficult. Okay, it just looks really intimidating when you start the problem. Let's do one with e. e to the x. y equals 3 times e to the x minus 5. <coughs> Typically what throws people off is what order they, they're supposed to solve it in. Okay, It's just like solving the equation. So switch x and y. x equals 3 times e to the y minus 5. So we start by adding the 5 to both sides. x plus 5 is equal to 3e to the y. Then we divide by 3 because the exponential expression is not by itself yet. Now it is. So we can put it in log form. We use the natural log with e. So the ln of x plus 5 over 3 is equal to y. Okay? <clears throat> Alright, questions about that? Any questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go the other way. Let's start with some logarithmic equations and turn them into exponential equations. Okay, we're going to find the inverse of the logarithmic function. <laughs> Our first one is y equals the negative natural log of x plus 2. y equals the negative natural log of x plus 2. So start by switching x and y. <coughs> We're solving for y. The y is inside the logarithm. So we have to start by getting the logarithm by itself. First things first here, there's a negative in front of that. So we need to divide by negative 1. So that gives us negative x is equal to the natural log of y plus 2. Solving for y, y is inside the logarithm. The only way to get it out of the logarithm is to write it in exponential form. So what's the base of the natural log? E. So e to the negative x is equal to y plus 2. Use the swoop, go around the equal sign. e to the negative x is equal to y plus 2. And then get y by itself. We subtract 2. That is not in the exponent. <clears throat> I repeat, that is not in the exponent. That is just beside the e to the negative x. Please make sure it is clear when you write that, that that is not, that minus 2 is not in the exponent, that it is um, supposed to be subtracted from the whole thing. If you wanted to check these, you can certainly um, try and graph it and look for that symmetry. There's nothing wrong with that. So this one's a pretty easy one to do because it's the natural log. I don't have to worry about change of base. So there's my original. Um, I'm doing this to point out some exponent things here. When you do the e to the negative x, you got to close parentheses because the negative x is the only thing in the exponent. And then... The <coughs> Excuse me, the minus 2. So let me graph it. There's the original function. There's the exponential function. They kind of overlap a little bit. So this one's a little bit funkier <coughs> to, to see. 
in terms of are they mirror images of each other, but you can kind of you can kind of see that there. Um, let me point out if for some reason you didn't close your parentheses or you did put the minus two in the exponent. Let me show you how it would clearly um, not be correct. Okay, so when you do this one, kind of look at it, see how this piece is further over here to the left. If you flip that over that line, it wouldn't exactly <coughs> match up <coughs> with that other side of the uh, with the original function uh, that was there. Okay, so it can be a little tricky to to check here, but if you really want to check things, that's one way you can do it. Okay, let's do one more log, and then I'll let y'all practice. So y equals one-fourth log base 7 of x plus 9. <clears throat> Whoops. Okay, notice there are no parentheses in this problem, so that means that the y is the only side, only thing that's inside the logarithm. Okay, the y is the only thing inside the logarithm. That plus nine is on the end of the function. It's not inside the logarithm because there's no parentheses there. So I just put parentheses around the y to kind of remind myself of that fact. So that means my first step is subtracting the nine. So one fourth log base seven of y. What's next? Multiply by four. I don't want to divide by one fourth. Remember what I told you, multiply by the reciprocal. So that is, um, go ahead and distribute that, 4x minus 36. You need to distribute that four times that entire left side. So it's 4x minus 36 is equal to log base 7 of y. Now we put it in exponential form. Now we use the swoop. So we've got 7 raised to the 4x minus 36 is equal to y. Now let me just show you. If you really wanted to check this one, what you would need to do, uh, put one fourth in parentheses, <clears throat> change a base, log of x divided by the log of the base, 7. You could put parentheses around that change of base part if you wanted to, but you really don't need it. It's okay the way it is. So that's the original function. Here's the inverse. Okay. Uh, there's a logarithmic function. I don't know how much we're really going to be able to tell from that. So we probably need to zoom out a little bit on this graph because it's way up there. But it is a good thing that that point where they intersect um, is it also intersects with y equals x. So that's good. Um, I don't usually like to zoom out. I usually like to manipulate my window, but I'm just going to try and do this quickly. So it looks like a straight line. I promise you that log function is not a straight line, nor is that exponential function. That's why I would rather just change my window. Let me do that. I regret it as soon as I did it. Um, let's go 0 to 25 on both of them. So we can see a little bit more curve. Mm, still looks pretty straight, but anyway. Y'all get the point of what I'm trying to do, right? Y equals X, mirror images, okay? <clears throat> I'm trying to check it that way. 